Hi guys, Scott Lindsay here. I just had a neat little twist on an old toolpath that I thought I would share with you and see if you can uh, you find it helpful and you can implement it in your workflow. For this example, we have this uh, part here with the really deep slot through the middle of it. And rather than trying to uh, side load our tool and, and maybe doing a peel mill or something like that through this, where we'd have to have a really, really long end mill with some really deep flutes to be able to do this. Uh, instead, we want a plunge mill with a high feed end mill and, and, and work our way through it doing a plunge type motion. And so for this, I'm gonna use the ruled tool path. Uh, you'll find, you won't find the ruled tool path up here in any of the uh, tool paths menus because um, it's, it's a really old tool path. But if you right click here in the your toolpath manager, you'll find the toolpaths and then you're going to go all the way down here to the wireframe and then you're going to go to the ruled toolpath. All right. So uh, for this example, I'm going to turn off the part and the fixture and I'm going to turn on uh, the drive wireframe. This is a wireframe toolpath. So surfaces and solids aren't going to do you any good. Um, so we have three chains here. They're kind of, you got the upper chain, which is spline number one. And then if you look real close, you've got another spline down here that's red and this green one up here that is the third chain. Um, if you notice that from this view, you can see that this chain has been shortened from this chain. All three of these are copies of the chain. Of, they're all three of them are the same except for this green chain we've shortened it on one side and extended it on the other side so if we come over here and you look at this side you can see that this this one is a little bit longer than this red one here um, you can see that i've got i've got some notes in here for you when you grab the file um, but let's uh, look at the tool path so we're going to come in here and so I'll show you the chains. So yeah, like it says, chain one is the upper chain. Chain two is that very lower chain. And then chain three is that one that's translated up just a little bit. Uh, and then it's been shortened and extended on either side. Okay. So what this does is if I'm going to come in here to right in the front view so we can see what's going on. We'll backplot this tool path and it's going to come in here it's going to approach it from my my retract height or whatever i've got my tool path and it's going to start cutting at this red line it's going to do a straight cut all the way down and then i'm going to get really close so we can see this it's going to because i extended this contour over on this side it's going to actually cause that tool to move back away from this wall that we're cutting over here okay and then it's going to retract up and then it'll come in here and it'll do the step over that I have defined inside my toolpath. And it'll just do that all the way through following whatever shape you have for your contour, whether it's a circle, a line or a spline or anything else you can think of. Okay. Um, so for the next one, this one is um, just kind of doing at more of an angle. Uh, this one is going to uh, have four, four splines in it. So let's take this and turn that off. We can see what we got going on. So this has a surface in here and we just used the surface to get the wireframe geometry that we needed and like before um this lower chain is 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 the same as the one up i mean they're not the same on this one but this chain and this chain are the same it's just extended on this side we have two chains up here that are following at the surface at here and this one has been extended so we've got four chains in this example so if we look at um our wireframe here chain one is the first chain it's it's the lower chain up here on the top because uh, 
we want when this retracts, we want it to come keep coming back out at an angle and clear the part. Chain two is going to be that lowest chain here at the bottom of my part. The third one is going to be that one that's extended up. And then the fourth one is the one up above that is also extended. So we can see that when we do this, this causes the tool to follow this surface kind of at an angle and we can kind of and then it retracts back at an angle so we can if we have a tool that's able to go under an undercut a little bit or maybe we're surfacing a wall and we just want to kind of come down that wall we can do that um, this example kind of just follows this uh, interesting little surface that we've drawn here just to kind of give you an example of how we can uh, do different things here so that you can um, see how you can uh, implement this toolpath in in your workflow i i really hope to see some of you guys use this feel free to tag me on linkedin with your videos of what you did i'd love to see them and i hope you have a good one see ya